the definite theory. So yesterday lecture we were learn about the homeopathic therapeutics for the diseases of the uveal tract. And now we will study about the diseases of the vitreous. So vitreous humor is an inert, transparent, jelly-like structure that fills the posterior cortex of the cavity of the eye and about 4 ml ml in volume. It is a hydrophilic gel that mainly serves the optical function in addition. It mechanically stabilizes the volume of the globe and is a pathway for nutrients to reach the legs and the tongue. So the structure shows the normal youthful vitreous gel is composed of a network of randomly oriented collagen fibrils <coughs> interspersed with numerous spiroidal macromolecules of hyaluronic acid. And the collapse of the structure with the age or otherwise led to the conversion of the gel into solution. The vitreous body can be divided into two parts, the cortex and the nucleus, the main vitreous body. So the gross anatomy of the vitreous in this diagram shows the anatomy of the vitreous in that firstly this is a ora serata, this is a vitreous, this is ora serata, this is a vigorous ligament. This black color is the space of burger. Then this is anterior hyaloid membrane and this is the posterior hyaloid membrane. And this purple color is the clopet scanner. This is the vitreous base that is 4 ml. Then the cortical vitreous. <coughs> It lies adjacent to the retina posteriorly and lens. So the vitreous posteriorly attached to the lens and ciliary body and posteriorly attached to the retina and lens and ciliary body and venous to anteriorly. So there is an anterior with lens, ciliary body and venous and retina is situated posteriorly to the cortical vitreous. The density of collagen fibrils is greater in this peripheral part. The condensation of these fibrils forms a false anatomic membrane which is called as an anterior hyaloid membrane which is anterior to the ora serata and posterior hyaloid membrane which is posterior to the ora. So in this diagram we can see anterior to the ora serata that is anterior hyaloid membrane and which is posterior to the ora serata, it is the posterior hyaloid membrane. Then the attachment of the anterior hyaloid membrane to the posterior lens surface is firm in the young and weak in the elderly. So <coughs> this attachment is firm in young and in elderly it is weak. Whereas posterior hyaluronic membrane remains loosely attached to the internal limiting membrane of the retina throughout the life. These membranes cannot be seen in a normal eye unless the lens has been extracted and posterior vitreous detachment has formed. So these membranes cannot be seen in a normal eye unless the lens has been extracted and posterior vitreous detachment has formed. So second is the main vitreous body that is nucleus. Nucleus it has a lens dense fibrillar structure and it is a true biological gel. It is here where the liquefaction of the vitreous gel starts first. So the microscopically, the vitreous body is homogeneous but exhibits wavy lines as of watered silk in the sleep lamp disc. And running down the center of the vitreous body from the optic disc 
to the posterior pole of the limb is the hyoid canal that is clopus canal of doubtful existence in adult down to this canal run the hyoid artery of the foot the attachment shows the part of the vitreous about 4 mm across the oris rata which is called as the vitreous base and where the attachment of vitreous is from so at the vitreous base attachment of vitreous is strong which is 4 mm across the oris rata that is this is oris rata 4 mm across this is the vitreous base which is strong and the other film attachment are around the margin of the optical disc fovean region and back of the crystalline veins of the hyalo capsular ligament of the head so this is the vagus ligament where the vitreous is attached behind the rata image then the disorder of the vitreous that is vitreous liquefaction synchysis vitreous liquefaction that is synchysis is the most common degenerative change in the vitreous causes of liquefaction include the degeneration such as sunai myopic and that associated with the retinitis pigmentosa post inflammatory particularly following uv hydrolysis and trauma to the vitreous which may be mechanical blunt as well as perforated so the thermal effect on vitreous following diathermy photocoagulation and cryocoagulation and radiation effect may also cause liquefaction so the causes of liquefaction include degeneration post inflammatory trauma thermal effect and radiation effect. So the clinical feature of liquefaction is that on the sleeve lab biomicroscopy, the vitreous liquefaction, that is synthesis, is characterized by absence of a normal fine fibrillar structure and visible pocket of liquefaction associated with the appearance of a coarse aggregate material which moves freely in the film liquid. and liquefaction is usually associated with the collapse synergies and opacity in the vitreous which may be subjectively as a black clotter in front of the eye then vitreous detach in that first one is a posterior vitreous detachment that is pvd pvd it refers to the separation of the cortical vitreous from the retina anywhere posterior to the vitreous base that is 3 to 4 mm wide area of attachment of vitreous to the ora sira so there is a Three to four in a wide area of attachment of vitreous to the ora serrata, which is called as the vitreous base, and PVD with the vitreous liquefaction, that is synthesis and collapse synergies, is a common occurrence in majority of the normal subject above the age of the sixty-five years. It occurs in eyes with sunai liquefaction. developing a role in the posterior hyoid membrane the synthetic fluid collects between the posterior hyoid membrane and the internal limiting membrane of the retina and lead to the pvd that is posterior vitreous detachment up to the base along with the collapse of the remaining vitreous chain that is synergy these changes occur more frequently in the FFC then the pepix and in the myopsis then the imatops. So 
So this is the first year which is detachment with the synthesis and synapsis. So this is the vitreous synapsis and this is the posterior vitreous detachment and this is the synthetic synapsis. A ring like opacity that is weight ring or stitches ring representing a ring of attachment of vitreous to the optic disc and is pathognomic of PVD. So the complication of the PVD include retinal break, vitreous hemorrhage, retinal hemorrhage and cystoid maculosis. Detachment of the vitreous base and the anterior vitreous is that it is usually occur following a blood flow and it may be associated with vitreous hemorrhage. So the anterior retinal dilate and this location of a crystalline base is seen in the detachment of the vitreous base and the anterior vitreous. So the next topic is the vitreous opacity. Since vitreous is the transparent structure and relatively non transparent structure present, it is weak form and opacity and cause the symptoms of fluid. So, the common conditions associated with the vitreous opacity are described below. First one is a mucosy volume. These are the physiological opacity and represent the residue of primitive hyaluronic vasculature. Patient perceive them as fine dots and filaments, which often drift in and out of the visual field against a bright background, for example, clear blue sky. Then persistent hyperplasty primary vitreous that is PHPG which results from failure of primary vitreous structure to regress combined with the hypoplasia of posterior portion of vascular tissue. So clinically it is characterized by a white pupillary reflex that is Leukocoria seen shortly after birth. So it is seen shortly after birth. That is white pupillary reflex, leukocoria. Then associated anomalies include congenital cataract, glaucoma, long and extended ciliary processes, microophthalmos, and vitreous hemorrhage. Differential diagnosis need to be made from other causes of leukocoria, especially retinoblastoma, congenital cataract, and retinopathy of pre-nature. Computerized tomography, that is CT scanning, that is CT scan, help in a diagnosis. CT scan, the full form is a computerized tomography, remember. Then, treatment consists of path plana, lensectomy, and excision of the membrane with anterior vitrectomy provided the diagnosis is made early and visual prognosis is often poor. Then, inflammatory vitreous opacity consists of exuded spore into the vitreous in patient with anterior uveitis, that is iridocytitis, and posterior uveitis, that is choroiditis, and past planitis, and sand.
and uveitis and endo ophthalmic they vitreous aggregates and condensation with liquefaction that it is the commonest cause of vitreous opacity condensation of collagen fibrillar network is a feature of the vitreous degeneration which may be senile myopic post traumatic or post inflammatory in origin then amyloid degeneration that it is a rare condition in which amorphous amyl material is deposited in the vitreous as a part of generalized amyloidosis these vitreous opacities are linear with foot plate attachment to the retina and the posterior lens surface then asteroid hyalosis it is characterized by small white rounded bodies suspended in the vitreous jet these are formed due to the accumulation of calcium containing lipids asteroid hyalosis is a unilateral asymptomatic condition usually seen in old patient with healthy vitreous and there is genetic relationship between these condition diabetes and hypercholesterolemia the genesis is unknown and there is no effective then synchiasis scintillance in this condition vitreous is laden with small white angular and crystalline bodies form phosphorus it affect the damaged eye which have suffer from the trauma vitreous hemorrhage or inflammatory disease in the past in this condition vitreous is a lipid and so the crystal sink to the bottom they are stirred up with every movement to the settle down again with the every pass these phenomena appear as a beautiful shower of a golden rain on ophthalmoscopic examination since the condition occur in a damaged eye it may occur at any age and the condition is generally symptomless but untreated then red cell opacity these are caused by so small vitreous hemorrhage or left out of the massive vitreous hemorrhage tumor cell opacity these may be seen as a free floating opacity in some patient with retinoblastoma and reticular cell sarcoma then so this is all about the vitreous opacity so vitreous opacity is a, is that they since the vitreous is a transparent structure and relatively non transparent structure present it will form an opacity and the cause symptoms of floater so common condition associated with the vitreous opacity are nusky hollandense then persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous that is phpv then inflammatory vitreous opacities and vitreous aggregate and condensation with liquefaction and amyloid degeneration with the asteroid hyalosis and synchiasis scintillance and red cell opacity and the tumor cell opacity then the next topic is the vitreous hemorrhage vitreous hemorrhage usually occurs from the retinal vessel and may present as free retinal that is sub hyaloid or an intrage hemorrhage so the integral hemorrhage may involve anterior middle posterior or the whole vitreous body that's why vitreous hemorrhage usually occurs from retinal vessel 
and may present as a free retirement that is sub hyoid or an impaired hyoid the causes of the vitreous hemorrhage are as follows that is first one is the spontaneous vitreous hemorrhage from the retinal breast especially those associated with the pgd second that is the trauma to the eye which may be blunt or perforating with or without retained intraocular foreign body in the nature so it occur due to some retinal break that is spontaneously when there is a trauma to the eye which may be blunt or perforating in when there is the inflammatory disorder such as erosion of the vessel and acute chorioretinitis and periphlegitis the time is primary or secondary to neuritis the fourth is the vascular disorder for example hypertensive retinopathy and the central retinal vein occlusion then fifth is the metabolic diseases such as diabetic retinopathy and seventh is the blood dyspraxia for example retinopathy of anemia leukemia polycythemia and the sickle cell retinopathy seventh is that there is a bleeding disorder for example purpura hemophilia and scurvy neoplasm vitreous hemorrhage may occur from the rupture of the vessels due to acute necrosis in the tumor like retinoblastoma and idiopathy so there are the many causes of the vitreous hemorrhage first is spontaneous trauma then inflammatory disease vascular disorder metabolic diseases blood dyspraxia bleeding disorder neoplasm and idiopathy clinical features are symptoms sudden development of the floater occurs when vitreous hemorrhage is small in massive vitreous the hemorrhage that is patient developed sudden painless loss of vision distant direct ophthalmoscopy reveal a black shadow against the red glow in small hemorrhage and no red glow in a large hemorrhage so signs as we see in the patient that distant direct ophthalmoscopy reveal a black shadow against this red glow in a small hemorrhage and there is a no red glow in a large hemorrhage then direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy may show the presence of blood in the vitreous cavity ultrasonography that is uhg with the b scan is particularly helpful in diagnosing the vitreous hemorrhage fate of the vitreous hemorrhage is a complete absorption may occur without organization and the vitreous become clear within 4 to 8 days organization of the hemorrhage with formation of the yellowish white debris occur in a persistent or recurrent bleeding then complication like vitreous liquefaction degeneration and khaki sent a glaucoma in trachea may occur the tinnitus proliferans may occur which may be complicated by fractional retinal detachment
that is the fate of the vitreous humerus that is complete absorption organization of humerus complications like uh, vitreous liquefaction degeneration khaki cell glaucoma that is in ophakia retinitis pluripotens may occur then next is the treatment the generative treatment consists of bed rest elevation of the patient head and bilateral eye patches this will allow the blood to settle down treatment of the cause that is once the blood settles down indirect ophthalmoscopy should be performed to locate and further manage the positive lesions such as a retinal break phlebitis proliferative retinal break Third is hysterectomy by part planner. Root should be considered to clear the vitreo. And if the hemorrhage is not absorbed by the hemorrhage, then hysterectomy should be considered to clear the vitreo. So, firstly, conservative treatment that blood bed rest, elevation of the patient's head, bilateral eye patch. This will allow the blood to settle and treatment of cause once the blood settled down. Then remove the cause. So indirect ophthalmoscopy should be performed to locate and further manage the cognitive lesions such as the retinal break, phlebitis, proliferative retinopathy. Detect tummy by part plumber. Should be considered to clear the vitreous and the heat the hemorrhage is not absorbed at the same moment. Then, vitrectomy. Vitrectomy is a surgical removal of the vitreous, is now not an infrequently performed procedure. So, it is not infrequently performed procedure. It is surgical removal of the vitreous that is vitrectomy. Types consist of anterior vitrectomy, core vitrectomy, and the subtotal and total vitrectomy. So, firstly, when we see of the anterior vitrectomy, it refers to removal of anterior part of the vitreous. Then, core vitrectomy, it refers to the removal of central bulk of the it is usually indicated in endo of human. So it is poor vitreous. Then subtotal and the total vitreous it, it almost whole of the vitreous is removed. So in anterior there is a uh, vitreous there is a removal of the anterior part of vitreous. In core vitreous there is a removal of central bulk of the vitreous. Usually in end of the In subtotal and total, there is almost whole of the vitreous is removed. The techniques used in vitrectomy are open sky vitrectomy and closed vitrectomy. Open sky vitrectomy, this technique is employed to perform only anterior vitrectomy. And closed vitrectomy, that is a past planar vitrectomy, in that Pars planar approach is employed to perform core vitrectomy, subtotal, and the total vitrectomy. So, the pars planar approach is employed to perform core vitrectomy and subtotal and total vitrectomy. Then, vitreous substitute. Vitreous substitute or the so called tamponding agent are used in vitro retinal surgery is to destroy the intraocular pressure and provide an intraocular tamponade. An ideal vitreous substitute should be having 
a high surface tension optically clear and biologically inert so currently used to be a substitute in the absence of an ideal substitute are first air air is commonly used internal component in uncomplicated cases and it is absorbed within the 3 days second that is physiological solution such as zingus lactate or balance salt solution that is bhs can be used as a substitute after the vitrectomy for endophthalmitis or uncomplicated vitreous hematoma so vitreous substitute also called as tamponding agent and are used in vitro retinal surgery so there is a restore intraocular pressure provide intraocular tamponade an ideal vitreous substitute should be having a high surface tension optically clear and biologically alert and currently used vitreous substitute in the absence of ideal substitute are air and physiological solution such as linger lactate or bhs that is balance salt solution then third is the expanding gases are preferred over air in the complex cases requiring a prolonged intraocular tamponade they are used as 40% mixture with air examples are sulfur hexafluoride that is sf6 it double its volume and last for 10 days then perfluoropropane it quadruples its volume and last for 28 days then four that is perfluorocarbon liquid that is pfcl are heavy liquid which are mainly used are mainly used to remove drop nucleus or ion from the vitreous cavity and to unfold a giant retinal tear and to stabilize the posterior retina during the peeling of the epiretinal nephron fifth that is silicon oil allows a more controlled retinal manipulation during operation and can be used for prolonged intraocular tamponade after the tenant detachment surgery so this is about the vitreous substitute then the homeopathic therapeutics for the diseases of the vitreous shows the vitreous opacity that is diffused and purple diffuse vitreous opacity is in that case hemamylis piparsan kali iodide murk cor murk iodum rubrum and thuja are used and in the turbid vitreous opacity cholesterol kali iodide phosphorus prunus pinosa senega solan nigrum and sulfur are used So firstly, the Hamamelis marginica. Hamamelis marginica shows are indicated in the case where objective shows that lids are swollen and eye are blood shot. Then subjectively, I feel force out and sore pain in the eye. Characteristics are that the sphere of action of Hamamelis is passive, congenital. and the venous hemorrhage clinically there is a traumatic iritis with hemorrhage and it has been of more service for hastening the absorption of intraocular hemorrhage then the 
parte. Hipachav objectively shows patient that upper ladies rate taller implant with the pressive face morning exaggeration. Implant eyes white red profuse lacrimation spasmodically close lid in the morning. Then subjectively there is an intense photophobia. Eyes are very painful or ache in the bright daylight and if he attempt to move them, I was very sensitive to touch with the pain are so as if bitter, pressive, throbbing, shooting, smarting pain. In the external cancers with the hardened mucus and pressure in the eyes as from the cell. Then VGR of Hippasov shows the obscuration by reading. Beam side by the candlelight, blindness on rising and standing after sitting bed over field of the vision reduce one half, continual movement of bright circle before the eyes, object look too large. Then characteristic shows oversensitiveness of the nervous system, hence extreme sensitiveness to touch to cold air and to cold application. And the sensitiveness made the subject irritable with hasty speech and action. Blepharitis, keratitis, phylactular inflammation of the cornea, corneal opacity, and Supportive coronitis and acute phlegmonous inflammation with the pustular and ulcerative keratitis with great intensity of the symptoms of cyst, keratoiritis, catarrhal or purulent conjunctivitis and iritis are usual. Then Kali Ayurveda in that Objective that is a diffuse keratitis develop during administration of these remedies and improve rapidly upon discontinuing the drug. There is an edema of the lid, purulent conjunctivitis, chemosis and lacrimation is seen. Subjectively, there is a burning in the eyes and pain over the left side of the head and in the arm. So there is a dark stormy days. Vision shows a deep and strong. The characteristics are when these remedy is thoroughly indicated, there will almost always be edematous or infiltrated state of the affected Then clinically Kali Ayur is very useful for violent syphilitic iritis after the abuse of mercury. The iris is much swollen, aqueous, cloudy, ciliary injection mark, and a bright, angry red. Pain at night may be severe, photophobia, and lacrimation is varied, and has helped. Or vital periostitis, syphilitic or not, pain intense or acute. Pustules of the cornea and conjunctiva, a very prominent remedy for acute or chronic aridocoronitis, especially if syphilitic, with excessive and variable amount of heaviness of the vitreous. Then Mercurius shows that objective are upper lid are thick and red like a star, eyes inflamed, 
with solid diaphragm and a very sensitive to touch or light. Lids are spasmodically closed. A screen that we mentioned, there is a morning agglutination. So eyes are possibly drawn together in flung swelling in the region of the lacrimal bone. Subjectively, there is a photophobia, gas light, intolerance of light and fire light. So there is a heat and redness pressure in the eyes, burning and biting. Sensation of a cutting substance under the left upper lid. There is a choroiditis, desalinated and simple. Vision is a dim, a form before one or the both the eyes. Eyes are drawn together or on trying to look at anything and cannot see it distinctly. The more she tries, the less able is she to restrain the contraction. She is obliged to lie down and close the eyes, the blinded by firelight in the evening. Characteristics are there is an aggravation from night. The charges are thin and acrid by the glare of the fire. Clinically, syphilis is a mark. Dacryocystitis, syphilitic lacrimal fistula, eye trouble from working over a fire. There is an ophthalmia neonatal and superficial inflammation of cornea or conjunctiviva, cateral phylacular or ulcerative conjunctival redness variable usually marked. Sometimes there is a chemosis. Keratitis usually from hereditary syphilis. Keratoiritis with or without hypophia. There is a epispheritis, blepharitis and iron. Mercurious pains are generally severe, more frequently tearing, burning, shooting or sticking and not confined to the eye but extend into the forehead and temple. Temples often sore to touch, iritis, retinitis, suppurative choroiditis and optic nerve. Then phosphorus. Phosphorus shows objective that our eyes are sunken and surrounded with a blue ring. Eyes seem too large. There is an edema of the lid and around the eye with the tosis and migraine. Subjectively, there is aching and burning pain in the eye with the stiffness and heat. There is a dull pain after reading. Vision that is objects look red, letters look red when reading. Hemerlopia that is the day blindness sees more distinctly in a twilight than during the day. Eyes given out while reading. Very sensitive to external impression. Clinically useful fall choroiditis that is disseminated and simple. With the choroid inflammation, atrophic ciliary neuralgia, blepharitis, keratitis, corneal opacities, myopia, due to or increased by ciliary spasm, and has been reduced perceptively with the 2x impact. Then, prunus spinosa. Prunus spinosa, the common name is the black thought. Subjectively, the patient feels that pain in the right eyeball. As if inner part of the eye would be torn up, and a sharp pain shooting like lightning from the right forehead through the brain and coming out at the occipital. There is a characteristic shows are neuralgia, usually pressing pain, crush or shooting, usually motion, maybe night, occasionally periodic, prunus renew, deep pain, and even the pathological condition which they are accomplished. Clinically, an intense pain as if eyeball must burst or as if 
expressing as under or as if crushed or wrenched. The pain often sharp and rising in the morning and beginning to walk about. So dark before the eyes in the morning and rising from the mm. there is a transient obscuration vision obscured with nausea and pale face. The characteristics of Prunus spinosa is that is like a pulsatula, that is a mild, gentle, fearful patient, usually a blonde, often female. There is a amenorrhea, scanty or delayed menses may be irritable but is unable to reason. To Negroes use the pulsatilla if no other remedy is clearly indicated. It is <coughs> aggravation from war and better by the gentle motion. In cool and open air, there is a vertigo, fever without the thirst, and even when the patient lick deep to the monstrous day. The characteristics are the mucus discharge is blank, profuse, yellow or whitish and thick. There is an indigestion from rich fat food or two to three hours after eating. So clinically, Spruna Spinoza is a valuable remedy and its selection should be largely governed by the temperament and general symptoms. This is useful for the cataract conjunctivitis, acute, that is in acute phlegmonous dacrocystitis, sometimes will be avoided. Trichoma without panis, then zephyritis, dies, it give them early and not too strong often about death. So it is continue prevent their recurrences, that is prurent conjunctivitis, scrofulous ophthalmia, phylenticular conjunctivitis or keratin. Photophobia may be lacking. There is the opacity of vitreous humor. Sprugus spinosa is an important remedy in the vitreous opacity. Then the Senega. Senega shows hyperphoria, which is better by bending head backward. It acts on the rectus superior muscle. It is useful in blepharitis and when leads are dry and crusty, it is like a graphite. Then dryness with the sensation as if too large for orbit. There is a staring, lacrimation, flickering, but must wipe eyes frequently. Object looked shaded. Muscular asthenopia. It is useful in the double vision, better by bending head backward. There is opacity of the vitreous humor and promote the absorption of the fragment of lens of the upper. So, Seneca is also useful remedy for the vitreous opacity. Then, Solan Nigrum. Solan Nigrum, the common name is a black night shade. It is useful in the opacity of the vitreous humor when there is a pain over both the eyes, and there is an alternate dilatation and contraction of the pupil, regions are weak side and there is a floating spot. Then the last remedy is the sulfur. Sulfur objective is lacrimation in the morning with the burning followed by the dryness, swelling and pain in the lid with the lacrimation. Eyes are dry in the room, lacrimation in open air, lids are red and swollen in the morning, redness of the lid and conjunctiva with the eruption of the pimples on open air. And there is a heaviness of eyes and morning agglutination. So the redness of the eyes during the day and violent itching in the evening. There is a Inflammation of the eyes or sleep with the swelling, redness of conjunctiva, white vesicle on the white of the eye close to the corneas. 
there is a purulent mucus in the eye. Subjectively, the patient feels that there is a much itching in the eyebrow and tip of the nose of the lid in the with the permit. There is a dryness of the inner surface of the lid with the burning, dryness, smarting, itching of the lid margin and morning sandy sticking burning in the outer canthus with the pricking in the eyes causes one to scratch and rub them. Biting of the eyes and lacrimation very often a feeling of heaviness and aching in the eyeball when reading or writing. So there is an eye writing. Characteristics of sulfur are it is worse after washing, bathing, early morning sulfur wall is l'oreal that chiefly in the chronic diseases but it is nonetheless important in acute condition or as an interference element. So sulfur is especially very useful for the people subject to the skin or after such an eruption have been suffering that is even many years before by local treatment and sharp darting pain like the pain Then thuja of eruption. Objectively the thuja shows the nocturnal obliteration pimples from the lower lid margin then star in the right eye white of the eye much inflamed and subjectively the patient feels that there is a tearing pain in the left eyebrow which disappears after touch lid feels solid as if a foreign body there in the eye. There is a burning and stinging in the edges of the lid in the evening and in the eyes with the injection. So eyes feel dry, sandy, pressure in the eye, a painful stitch through center of the left eye and commencing in the center of the brain. So it is useful in choroiditis, disseminated and simple with thyroiditis and it is also useful in the vitreous operation. So this is all about the homeopathic therapeutics of the diseases of vitreous that is thuja occidentalis, sulfur, solan migram, Renega, Prunus pinosa, Phosphorus, Mercurius, Kali iodatum, Hipparcel, Hamamanis. It are useful for the diffuse and turbid vitreous opacity. And in the diseases of vitreous, we was learned about the vitreous substitutes, vitrectomy. Fate of the vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous hemorrhage, then vitreous opacities, vitreous detachments, disorder of the vitreous, that is vitreous liquefaction, and all about the diseases of the vitreous. So, today we completed the diseases of the vitreous. In the next lecture, we will continue our lecture with the diseases of the retina. Till that, student have a good day and now we stop here.